So tyrosine kinases play a very important role in many, in the control on many natural uh, important biological processes uh, during development and in the adult uh, animal and uh, people. And therefore, because they play such an important role, mutations or changes in the regulation of these molecules uh, causes dramatic uh, changes in cells which lead to cancer and many other diseases. So because they play such a fundamental role, if something goes wrong in a way of genetic mutation or some other change in mechanism, major diseases take place. And many, many cancers are driven by such mutations. So from the beginning, from the very beginning, it became clear that tyrosine kinases play an important role in cancer because tyrosine phosphorylation and kinase activity was discovered for an enzyme called C-SARC or SARC or V-SARC. It has different names and because of when it's picked up from virus and from cells. And so this was a gene which causes cancer, an oncogene. So it was clear that it plays a, an important role in cancer from the get-go. However, the broad application and the broad processes, understanding how this occurs, occurs once it became clear that certain signaling pathways are entirely regulated by tyrosine kinases. Receptors, sense certain receptors, surface receptors, which are activated by the ligands, are oncogenic proteins. These receptors are endowed with tyrosine kinase activity, for example, the EGF receptor. Certain ligands of receptor tyrosine kinases, such as PDGF receptor, are oncogenic proteins, and they really activate uh, the same tyrosine kinase pathway. So we have here an entire process where a molecule which is a growth factor, a molecule which is a receptor, and a signaling molecule are all tyrosine kinases. So this has been elucidated until the mid-80s, and then it became clear that if you block them, you will develop new drugs. And so s since the late 80s, there was an activity of trying to harness this knowledge and to develop new drugs that would lead to the development of new cancer therapies. Yes, so, so you have to understand that uh, the, the approach here is unique because it is based on understanding what drives cancer. And it took many, many years in order to figure out that we are talking here about the general mechanisms, which is a normal, normally important mechanism, which upon genetic alterations causes cancer. And so, so this, this is what set the stage for finding the limiting step that kill us heal. And this took quite a few years. Uh, and so, so that's why it took that many years to develop uh, this mechanism. However, uh, since then, there are 20, more than 20 drugs which have been improved, approved for different cancers utilizing this knowledge. So when it became clear, there was a massive interest in that. The difference between these drugs and the conventional chemotherapy is that conventional chemotherapy kills cancer cells and also affects normal tissues. Targeted therapies directly act upon the mutation that drives the cancer, which is the cause for cancer. And therefore, uh, you know exactly what patient populations will be treated. And then the side effect, when you treat patients which have the mutations, are much, much reduced compared to conventional therapy. So this is clearly something which is novel, where you hit the core what drives the cancer rather than a general killing mechanism with some different activity from normal to human t for uh, disease tissue. When something becomes obvious, there is a major effort in drug companies to do it. And as I mentioned, there's already at least 20 drugs which have been approved for different cancers. There's a massive effort uh, now in developing cancer drugs which act upon tyrosine kinases. Uh, many, many clinical trials, um, probably maybe 50 or maybe more than those. So I, I believe that there will be many drugs approved this year and in the next few years for cancer. 
This approach is also relevant for other cases where you have a mutation, which is a driver for a disease which you can drug it, namely develop drugs. And so this is happening as well. Uh, and uh, so I think this is going to be an approach not only relevant for cancer. So precision, the difference again between precision me medicine and what has been used in the past is that you are dealing with the major driver of cancer. You first of all identify what cancer what is a driver of a particular cancer, and then you target it in a rational way. The problem is that we do not understand now the drivers of most cancer. Actually, it's only part, part of the cancers where we know what the driver is. So it requires major investment, primarily in basic science, to understand what are the drivers, all different type of combination therapies which can be used and eventually to be able to treat cancers uh, in a more comprehensive name. Moreover, many of these targeted therapies are not cues. They really uh, lead to a long, sometimes short, even remission. And so there is uh, mechanisms of relapse which has to be dealt. And uh, so this is all ongoing now as we speak.